Well, welcome uh, to the 2019 Pitt football season. I'm kind of jealous you guys kind of got into football week earlier with the Steelers. Um, you know, sitting there watching them kind of compete and get after it and take the, take the trucks out to Latrobe. Uh, you kind of kind of look and say, hey, why, why don't we get to start at the same time? But uh, we are excited to get this season started. Um, you know, our kids have worked extremely hard during the summer with Coach Andrews and his strength staff. We've made some major improvements, I think, in that room. Um, you know, we've got 12, really 15 returning starters, 12 of which have been with us, uh, as well as three graduate transfers that we're uh, happy to bring into our family and really see what they have to do. I mean, we'll see what they can do when the football pads are on because they haven't really been with us. Um, so that's kind of where we are as far as the personnel goes. But I'm excited about where we are. Um, we had, you know, first practice, usually we're six or seven in before we have media day. So we thought we'd change it up a little bit, but excited about where we are after practice one. I think there's a lot of recall. I think the summers have changed a little bit with the 30 minutes that we can spend with them during the summer uh, as far as on the field. And, and we've kind of just made that better. I think every year we get a little bit better with our preparation for seasons, uh, a little bit more detailed. So I'm happy with where we are there. And, and uh, I thought it was a solid practice today. We'll watch the tape. Obviously, haven't had a chance to watch tape yet, um, but excited. So I guess I'll leave that uh, to you guys with questions. Is there a different kind of energy, you know, when you open the season with a divisional opponent when you start camp? You know, I, I hope there's no different energy. I think, you know, especially the energy in the first day. Will there be more energy in day 14 or 15 when, the, you know, the camp drags on and, and August drags on? Uh, maybe. Um, you know, as far as the coaches go, I, I kind of talked to our kids about that uh, last night, that, you know, the coaches are prepared. It doesn't matter who we're playing. I think the energy is the same. But I think for the players, as we start to get closer, they'll get more anxious because they know how important that opener is. And again, um, you know, a, a game is a game, um, a team is a team. But when you start off in the ACC, it's important. Our guys know how important that maybe the ACC is a little bit more when they look at what happened last year with maybe not so good in the non-conference and you know the, the, the you know, stakes are against us. And all of a sudden, you know, we make a run in the in the conference in the coastal. I think that was an important lesson for our kids to learn how important that really is. We talk about how important the ACC is, um, but to learn that lesson and know that, hey, it really doesn't matter. We want to win them all. Um, that's always the goal for every football team is to win every game. But uh, to start off with an ACC opponent, you know, the team that's picked to win the Coastal, uh, certainly uh, resonates with our football team. Matt, this is the first senior class in the, in the OU as its head coach. What, what do you think might set these guys First of all, it's a little scary, Jerry. So well, thanks for reminding me of that. Um, um, but what was the, the final part of that question? All I could hear is, or think of is I'm the I'm first gonna, coach what's, what's to have a football. What's going to set part? I mean, seniors sort of you know, you sit in the first row here and they set the top. What yeah, you, you sit right where DeMar sits right there. DeMar right. Hamlin, yeah. There's his playbook right on there. Yeah, it's not a playbook, but <laughs> close. Anyway, what's going to set these guys apart, these seniors, in your, your mind? What's, I mean, I think, you know, 2019, you know, is, is their season. It's, you know, I talked about these seniors. It's their football team. And, uh, you know, I think each senior class has a different style of leadership. You know, uh, we're going to find out who captains are here in a month. Um, but each, each senior class has a different way of le leading. And I think, you know, we have different different style with these guys. They have a different attitude. They have a different mindset. Uh, they have different goals. Um, and I like how they've come together. You know, just yesterday, you know, I get a call from Amir Watts FaceTiming me, you know, and he's only like 40 yards away. He FaceTime me saying, Coach, I need your help. I go in this defense staff room and they're talking about ideas and things that they want to be. And it's kind of like that really hasn't happened in five years. So there's little things like that that these kids are taking ownership of who they are, what they are. And, and that senior class that sits in those front rows, as you said, you know, they know this is their football team. And I think that's important. Can you share your, your conversation with Amir? Um, you know, they're just talking about really, you know, um, you know, to just to, I guess, summarize it, they basically are having a conversation about who they want to be on defense. So every year, it's, I, you know, I want the offense, defense, and special teams to have a blueprint of what they want to be. And it comes down to this simply is, you know, in the past when I was a defensive coordinator, you know, we used to always tell the defense, hey, you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do this, and you got to do this. And they would be like, you know, it's sometimes in one ear and out the other. Because no one wants to be told, make your bed. You know, you tell your kids to make the bed in the morning. They're kind of like, hey, that wasn't my idea of a, a morning. Um, 
So we really, if, if you know, instilled in our kids saying, hey, tell me what you want to be offensively. What do you want to be defensively? What do you want to be on special teams? And let them build their blueprint. So again, hopefully they're regurgitating what we're feeding them uh, as far as that blueprint. But we want them to have the identity. So it was c kind of some of those questions about, you know, things they want to do. And I was like, you know, it's just good to see the enthusiasm. In the past, it's been like, you know, hey, let's get it done. You guys got to get that blueprint done. Have you done it yet? You know, what are you waiting for? But these guys have been on top of it. And obviously the coordinators have uh, done an excellent job of pushing them through that, too. So, Pat, the, the goal is then to get them to want to make the beds on their own? Is that the goal is to say, hey, Mom, I think my goal is to, to get up this morning and make my bed. And it's kind of like, well, if, they, if it's their idea, they'll probably do it. But if you tell them to do it, they probably aren't going to do it. So yeah, you guys can use that as a parenting. Like years of Jedi mind stuff to get them to come around What's that? Does it take some Jedi mind tricks to get them to come around that? Your yeah. players? Maybe. Maybe. I just want them to figure it out. I want to, you know, know, and again, they've got an idea. They know what they were lacking a year ago offensively and defensively um, and you know offensively last year it was all about being violent well they were violent you know they might have not had some things on there maybe they should have so we got to add some things about who you want to be and what you want to do and how's, how's the install of Mark's offense gone and what are your thoughts on that unit? yeah Jeff uh, it's, it's gone you know it's gone well as expected obviously we haven't had the test yet you know um, you know, the kids can say, I'm studying hard for that exam, but until you have that test and the exam, um, you never know how it goes. So, you know, exam is um, on the 31st in the evening there, and, you know, we're going to find out there. But, you know, I think the first part uh, of that question is really how are the kids with it? Do they like it? Are they engaged in it? Or are they kind of like, oh, you know, we're doing that again? Um, but I think, you know, if when you get a chance to ask that question to, the, to our offense and our players, um, they'll be able to answer that maybe a little bit better than I can because it's, it's, it's their offense and how do they like it. And I think you'll get the truth. But I think they really like it. I like what we're doing. I like how we're, you know, combining maybe some of the, the Whipple stuff and what we've done here in the past. I mean, obviously, we're going to run the football um, and we're going to continue to find ways to run the football um, and, you know, whatever it may be. And I think, you know, those are important things. So it's going well. Yeah. I mean, the first thing we're, you know, you're saying too early for their confidence? No, like, how, how do you guys, you know, how, how are we approaching it? Approach that, yeah. We're approaching it is right now we're worried about ourselves, okay? Um, we're worried about what we are doing. You know, we're worried about our football team, you know, what we're doing offensively, fundamentally, technically. Defensively, special teams, the same thing. Uh, worried about the chemistry in this room, how we can communicate and do things better as a football team. Um, and we'll worry about them when we start getting, you know, probably two weeks out is when we'll start to, you know, the game plan's already been put in. Uh, that'll get tweaked. So coaches have prep, prepped it. But, you know, right now we're worried about being a better football team. And then we'll worry about, you know, that game later on. Because if what, all we did is worry about that, we probably will miss on a lot of things. Not really. I mean, I think we were picked fifth a year ago. So, you know, I wish we were picked sixth, really. Push, push us down, the, you know. You know, again, it all just comes down to respect. And, you know, um, I think it comes down to how you finish your season. And we didn't finish maybe as strong as, as Virginia did, and, and uh, good for them. I'm not worried about what the preseason ranks look like. I'm worried about what the postseason ranks look like. But do you remind them that they trapped this road before they won? Um, you know, we, I, I, I don't want to talk about what we've done, Andrew, in the past. I'd like to really move forward. You know, as you walk in, you can see, you know, a little bit of a, you know, I want them to see it. I don't want to talk about it. You know, if I sit here and talk about it every day, they'll be like, hey, coach, you're still thinking about 2018. I'm on to 19. You know, we have signs that'll tell them what they did on the practice field. We're not going to talk about it. But I think it's good to walk by there and say, hey, we did that. We can do it again. You know, you know, I, obviously it's, you know, the growth is in every position. If I could just say, if I had to say one thing, you know, uh, man, I wish it was that easy to just focus on one thing. But if you did have to pick one thing, you'd have to say, you know, we need to have a, you know, an accompanying passing game to go with our run game. I mean, I, I don't think, I think everybody in this room could probably answer that question. Um, but it's more than that. You know, if we get our passing game going and we don't have a run game, you know, we're going to have the same, same issues. I don't want to be one dimensional on offense and I want to be better on defense. 
something you could tell that's different about Kenny this year than last year when we in the camp? You know, you can tell he's a year older, you know, because he is. Um, you know, I don't see anything really different as far as who Kenny is. Um, but, you know, every one of our kids are grown up. You know, I look at Nick Patty out there today. I said something to him about, like, wow. You know, he used to have some pencil legs, and all of a sudden he looks, you know, I told him we might move him to linebacker pretty soon, which was a joke, so don't, put, don't print that, Jerry. Um, but he just looks different. And, you know, every one of our kids has made improvements in the weight room. They're bigger, they're faster, they're stronger. Um, you know, we're, we're getting better in all phases. And Kenny, I'm sure, looks better. Does he look so much that you can see it? I mean, there's, you know, you can take some of those freshmen's body and look at them, and then all of a sudden they slim down and, and they have a V to their body now. Um, but with, with a quarterback that's already pretty darn good looking, I mean, he still looks good. You know, I'm sure he's got more confidence, you know. Um, you know, Coach Whipple thought he only played three games the year before. He's like, I didn't realize he only played three. I mean, that guy's only started for a year, so we're going to see that type of improvement. And I said, Kenny played four, so we had to go back to that Syracuse game and show him that last play that he completed. Um, and, you know, so, so Kenny's growing. I mean, he, you know, and he's going to look different next year compared to this year. So that's our job. If he's not growing, then, you know, we've done a bad job. We've done a poor job. You know, I, you know, it's hard to, you know, I watched, uh, I watched, you know, obviously the whole practice, and you're kind of like this. There's a lot of moving parts in, in our ACC championship period that we call it near the end of practice. Um, you know, I just saw him jack somebody up, and they weren't only in shorts, but it was a punch. And, um, you know, I, I'm excited about all those guys, but I'm excited about our offensive line. I mean, nobody was excited about him a year ago. Everybody's like, that's the weakness. We got all these new guys. You know, really, when you look at Herndon starting new and and uh, and Connor Dentino, and you got this new guy coming in from Kent State, like who's this guy? And and I've got a lot of faith in what our offense does. I got a lot of faith in Coach Borbley, who I think does an excellent job developing those guys. I think we're you know probably taller, more athletic. You watch those guys when you look down there. You know, watch those guys work out tomorrow in practice, and just watch them move around in, in those ABC and teach periods. They are a good-looking group. Uh, they lack a little of experience, but you know we've all lacked experience at one point. That doesn't mean you can't be successful. So I'm excited about that group, and and I expect them to be good. <coughs> had a lot of production replacing running back. <clears throat> How important is it to have one guy carry the ball to that load? And if it is important, you feel like you have that guy, or who looks like that guy? You know what? I wish I could answer that question. Um, you know, coming out of spring ball. Um, I don't know what the two deep looks like. EJ just makes it up most of the time. Um, he puts down whatever he wants to. I'm just kidding there, too. Um, but, you know, I think coming out of spring, it was really AJ Davis and Sibley's right on his tail. Right now, it's that same thing. But, you know, Michael Salahuddin is healthy right now. Uh, he'll be full go out there. We'll still limit him and be careful that we don't overdo it because we don't want to push him too fast. But he can do anything we want him to do. I mean, if we want him to go live every period, we would do that. But we're just going to take him in slowly. Um, and then, you know, uh, you know those, those three guys, and then we're going to find out what Vince Davis and, and Daniel Carter and Kyle Vereen, all those guys have, you know, at that position as well. I don't know if I missed anybody on the depth chart there. Um, you know, Valik played some running back in the spring, but really we've moved him to, a, to the wide out position. We just think he's, you know, just with the depth back there, um, we want him to be more of a running back. And, you know, with some of those little, you know, motions we do, and, we'll, you know, we'll be able to get the ball in his hands somehow. But he's really electric out, out in space. Uh, but if we need him there, he's got enough reps in spring ball that we could possibly, you know, throw him there. But he's a receiver right now. Uh, this is gonna be your uh, this season. Your I mean, how much do you feel like the uh, the program's identity matches you as a coach, or or really what you thought it would be at this point in time during your time here? Well, I'd be a fool to say, God, it's nothing like I thought, Craig. But uh, I mean, I, you know, hope it is. I mean, I, I, that's for you guys to determine. I don't ever look and say, Gosh, does it have the identity I want? You know, the identity is up there. Do I think we have a great attitude? Yes. Do I think we play with great effort? Today, I'd give it like a B effort, okay? But that's because they've been out, you know, working at a B effort when we're not there in seven on seven. So we'll get that, you know, we'll get that going. Are we a tough football team? I think we are. And are we a smarter football team than a year ago? I think we got a lot of knowledge in this room. I think our coaches have done a great job. So the identity is there. You know, you got 110 players in camp that you hope are all on the same page. And that's what we'll have camp for to make sure everybody's got that identity. And, um, but when you, you know, think about pit football and what we want to be, it's a blue collar uh, football team. And I think that's what we've got. I think we have an athletic blue collar football team, though. And I think we've got a lot of depth. You, know, you never want to say this one was the best or that, but is this as talented a defensive line as, as far as 
top to bottom as you've had since you've been here at Pitt? Yeah, I would, I would say for sure. I mean, you know, you look at, you know, wish Aaron Donald was in that that group, but uh, missed out on that one. But, you know, Juan Price and K.K. Mosley and Daryl Render, I mean, there were some good players in the, in the past, and I never want to forget those guys. Um, but uh, when you look at, like, there's, you know, especially inside, you know, we've got some guys, but really, you know, Rashad Weaver and Patrick Jones has really come on. He's, I mean, I think he's got about, you know, about every strength record that you can have in the weight room right now. I mean, he's, he's done a tremendous job in the off season, uh, as well as Keyshawn Camp. I mean, it's just, um, you know, we're, we're, we've got a solid group there and we should be able to play, you know, at least seven guys, I, I would think. And we'll find out if that eighth guy comes through, you know, we'll, we'll see what these freshmen have too. You know, you, you hope. I mean, every year you hope. I wish we had had it last year. You know, you hoped you had it the year before, and, and I think we make strides every year. But, you know, I, I look back there, and I think we've got three starting corners. I think we've got three starting safeties, you know, with DeMar Paris and, uh, and, and Stalker, and at the corner with, you know, Jay Penny and uh, Dane Jackson, as well as Damari Mathis. I, mean, I think all three. I mean, so we got really, I mean, you're not, you know, there's no drop off when you put that other guy in there. That's major. We really haven't had that depth back there. And I think when you're able to do that, you can give a guy fresh legs and take three plays off and go back out there. I think any time a kid's got to play 75 snaps and, and, you know, we hope we don't have to play 95. But when, you know, when you're playing those tempo teams and you can put a guy in there, there's no drop off. And it might even be a step up. I mean, you might find a guy steps up. Uh, I mean, Damari Mathis, his numbers get in the weight room in this summer have, I mean, I think he's a 40 inch vertical jump. He's got the highest in the room. I and mean, you look at that guy, I mean, there's some, there's some impressive things going on. Atlas Johnson kind of came over after spring ball. Was his, did you bring him in more as you think you needed him or the talent was kind of too good to pass up? You know what, we watched tape on him. I just thought he fit our scheme. Um, you, know, um, you know, that linebacker crew, if we, Looked and again, we obviously didn't recruit him right at the end. You know, we were recruiting him for a while before he came on campus and before he made a decision. You know, I think he made a decision probably three weeks after a Texas visit. Um, you know, three weeks after a visit, but that's after you know, maybe a month of recruiting him. Um, but if you don't look at our linebacker position prior to, I mean, you lose, you know, a hell of a linebacker in, in um, uh, Regi you know, Reginus Quentin. You lose, you know, a, a guy that was an all conference player at one point in his career, Sean Ido, and obviously. Elijah Zeiss, I mean, you lose three starting linebackers, and, and we've got some young, talented guys that are inexperienced as well, and to bring a grad transfer in that you, you deal with for one year that is smart, he's athletic, and he fits really what we do. Uh, didn't play as much at Florida with a new staff coming in and, and maybe stuff that they you know, didn't want you know, and what we want. So it's all kind of you know, what you want as a football coach. I think he fits in you know, with our football team. I think he's having fun. And I'm interested to see what he's got. I mean, there's, there's competition, really. I mean, there's competition at the receiver spot, that linebacker spot, there's competition. And when you've got three corners that you say are starters, which one's going to start? I don't, can't tell you. We're going to find out how they compete in the offseason here, or I should say in August. And, um, and the same thing at every position. So there's competition on the old line. I don't know who that right side of that line is going to be. Um, I mean, you know, really, I mean, Carter Warren's a starter at left tackle coming out. But shoot, he might not be come August 31st. Who knows? But our kids are competing. And uh, there's no positions really that you can say that's it's done. He's that guy. Um, that's not what we want to. You know, we want competition in every position. And that, you know, if I had to pick the position where there's more competition than ever, I would say it's at linebacker. You know, you got Salim Brightwell and, and uh, Elias Reynolds and Mike. Both those guys have started um, at the Mike linebackers before. And then you got Chase Pine, who's also started against uh, Stanford. I mean, so there's a lot of guys that have started different games at different positions. So there's a lot of competition at that linebacker spot. Those three linebackers. You know, when you watch him run around out there and you look at him, it's like he looks like he could play anything, size-wise, athletic ability-wise. Um, but I think he could fit into the star of the money, the field or boundary, I think, athletically. Um, that's where we're going to put our best athletes. So I think he could play either one of those. Uh, I think we're going to start off really putting him into the boundary. You know, we start off the spring with, you know, Phil Campbell, who did a, you know, an outstanding job in the spring to the field, but then Phil played in the boundary. So we're going to move those guys around because we're ultimately always going to look to see where, how can we get our three best linebackers on the field. And if one goes down, we're not necessarily going to put his back up and we may make, take a guy from the money position and move him to the field or vice versa. So we're always going to try to get our best three players on the field regardless of what position. Do you think Celine will work at all at money? Yes. Yeah. You know, you're going to do a little bit, but we're going to find our three best. 
I don't want to be, you know, pigeonholed into, you know, just saying, you know, that he's only that and that's all you can do. And he's played that position before. So, I mean, he played it in the spring. Pat, were you surprised that you lost your order so late in the summer and what's your first your next move then? Not surprised at all. Um, you know, you know, you, you live and learn. We, you know, we wish Jake luck uh, wherever he lands. But not surprised. Well, we worked, you know, obviously, you know, several different holders. Um, but you know, you kind of see the writing sometimes. Uh, he's got a brother that's really talented coming in. That's like, you know, all the kids are looking like, holy cow, you know, um, he might be the next best kicker. Uh, so you see things that happen like that, and 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 then you know, you know, some other you know issues maybe during the year. And you know, he was in the transfer portal, you know, early because he's a good kicker. I mean, that guy's a talented kicker that can go play somewhere else. Um, you know, and I'd let him get in the portal. I said, you need to go. It's, it'd be good for you. If someone can give you a scholarship, I mean, he's a walk-on. And um, so we've got, we've got other guys that can hold him. We've got another guy that can kick, too. You know, I don't want to even get into it. Um, but we've we got plenty. You, you'll watch it out there tomorrow that you figure that out. But, um, you know, we're going to work three or four guys. I mean, obviously, we're going to work our quarterback positions. I think it's always great when you got a quarterback back there. You might even see Kenny Pickett doing it. Uh, but we're going to work our quarterbacks and receivers, guys that catch the ball every day. You expect to and it's really players? ultimately, I'm not picking the holder. The guy that's going to pick that holder is, is, is Kessman. Um, Alex will pick the, the holder. It's who he feels comfortable with. I want that guy walking out every snap and saying, that's my guy. Do you expect to get more production out of your tight end this year? Yes. Why is that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? You know, number one, because I think, you know, and uh, you know, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about it, but like, I don't think we have a tight end committed to us right now. And I think after they watch you know, us being able to at least throw the ball to the tight end, that there's going to be some tight ends that say, hey, I, can I come? Can I come? Uh, I truly believe that. So I'm in no rush to just take a guy to take a guy. Um, but you know, I think you know, they'll be a lot more productive. I think um, you know, in the run game and the pass game, that we'll just see more out of those guys. You know, I think you know, Grant Kerrigan's made some major improvements. He's faster. You watch him; he's smoother. Um, he's going to be tougher. You know, a year later, he's going to be. You know, he's going to have a little bit more of everything. Uh, Will Gregg, his body's changed. I think he came here about 225 pounds. I think he's 250. He looks the part now. You know, I wondered if they had a you know had a weight room where he came from. Um, just looking at that, and you know, when he got here, it's like you know, you were in a program for four years. You know, so Dave Andrews and our strength staff did an incredible job with him, and then uh, Nakia. Um, again, another one of those grad transfers that we've talked about with Nolan and Kylan. Um, I think he's a special player as well. He runs well. He's smooth. He's smart. And you know, I, anybody that hasn't really played for us, I don't really have a media day today because uh, they haven't taken a snap. But you know, we'll surely give those to you guys one at a time so you can get a chance to know those guys here. Is, you know, probably earlier earlier than later, EJ. Do we have any additional questions about five minutes where we're moving across the hall and meeting with our offensive coaching staff? Any final questions for Coach? Yeah, you, Pat, you said there's competition in every position. I mean, is there competition at quarterback? Well, if Kenny, you know, throws picks every series, you know, there, there certainly will be. Um, and again, when I say that, I mean, every position, I mean, those guys can tell you there ain't no competition. I got it, which is confidence. Um, but, you know, if Kenny doesn't do his job, yeah. Right now there's not, but, you know, what's Nick Patty going to do? You know, I want those guys to push Kenny, just like at every position. You know, it, no different back when I was in school, and you know, you always kind of looked in the rearview mirror, see what are those young guys doing. I better get my tail going. You know, was, you know, my opinion was never competition in my spot at linebacker, but you know, you're always going like this to find out who's back there, who's coming after you, and that, that, I hope that's at every position. That's competition. So we want we want Nick Patty to to, uh, to compete. We want Jeff George to compete. Does, does the offense need to evolve? I mean, you guys did it kind of hard nosed. You had two great running backs, and the line did a great job. And when you look around at the country at large, the, the teams that are the most successful are the teams that can be more dynamic, mm -hmm. especially down the field. I mean, mm -hmm. We talked about we have to define who we are. Is that the major point of emphasis? We want to we want to obviously score more touchdowns. I mean, the offense it's, they break every day on touchdown. I like that. Touchdowns are good. We want to score. We want to be more explosive. Uh, how do we got to do? You know, how are we going to do that? That's something we'll see August 31st. But yeah, we, we need to evolve. You know, we need to evolve on defense. We need to evolve in special teams. We got some new things in special teams as well. So, you know, I think every year we try to evolve. And uh, no, I don't like to be one dimensional. And um, you know, I think again, as a, as a defensive guy, you know, historically, anytime you make an offense one dimensional, and, and we like to make people one dimensional. We make we want to make them pass it. But if all you can do is run the ball, that's a problem. If I know that's all you're going to do is run the ball, I'm going to load the box. 
So it's either either way. I think all great offenses are ones that you're worried about. Okay, and Clemson's one of them. You're worried about the run and the pass. And when a defense has to worry about both of them is when you got problems. So, you know, we'd like to be 50-50. We'd like to be more balanced. And uh, and we've got to threaten people through the air as well as the run. And we're going to threaten you, th you know, on the ground. I can promise you that. Uh, but we got we got to start to threaten people in the passing game, and we will. And this is a little bit off the wall. I expect that. We're healthy. Let me get. Let me start injury wise. We're healthy. You know, I feel good. There's really nobody that's out uh, that we didn't expect to be out. Everybody's ready to go. But go ahead with your off the wall question. Um, especially when training camp, yeah, there's a certain number of hours you want you guys to get sleep. You know, at night, it lights out at 10:45, right? Yeah, they're in the rooms at 10:30 and lights out at 10:45. So if you're trying to go through the hallways up there, you know, stay out of the darn hotel, um, Jerry. Bring flash up at 10:45. The lights should be out. If you see a lot of lights up on the sixth floor, you know, hopefully it's a coach. Yeah, we do. We try to. I mean, you know, it's all about that. You know, you know, our kids. We give them a couple of days off, and they come back four pounds lighter. It's like, what did you eat? You know, we bring them back here. We feed these guys nutritionally. We do an unbelievable job of feeding our guys. And then when they go away from us, and they don't have. You know, Kevin Blinn, our, our cook, cooking for them every day, they kind of, you know, if that meal's not sitting right in front of them and saying, here you go, they don't eat it. So, you know, the way we hydrate, the way we feed them, and then sleep, those things are all critical. You know, I, I've told them, you know, they probably get sick of hearing me. We can have all those things on the wall back there, but you know what? If you don't take care of your body, your body's not going to take care of you. And it's as, you know, it's as simple as, you know, if you put the wrong gasoline, if you put water in your gas tank, you're going to struggle as you go down the road here. And that's, a, you know, you've got to take care of your car. You've got to change the oil. You've got to do all those little things to make sure that thing's running smoothly. Do they have to be here at 6 a.m., is that right? No, 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 no. You know, I think wake up was 6.30 or something like that. You know, they're back in the rooms. I think we broke, broke last night at 9 o'clock or 8.30. Then we had an 8.30 team meeting last night. So they were out of here by 9 o'clock. But shoot, they're half of them are sitting in here watching. You know, the big thing is getting them to go to bed. You know, they're, they're, they're used to waking up early more. We've got them on that, uh, that schedule. But, you know, go to bed at night. A lot of these guys like to play, you know, go back. They brought their video games to the hotel. You know, but just getting them to shut it down, turn their phones off, um, you know, meditate before you go to bed. That's, that's the key. But we want sleep is important. Yeah. Should I go in the rooms last night? They were rolling out. You know, they got those little, I don't know what they're called, those hammers that are, you know, it's amazing. Our kids are taking care of their bodies in the room. Now, what time they go to bed, I can't tuck them in. You know, we check them. I'm you know, knocking on every door, and, or they're having them propped open. I'm checking rooms uh, to make sure they're in their rooms and in bed. And last night on the sixth floor, which is where I stay, I would say 80 to 90 percent were already laying in bed at 10:45. That's a good. That's a good thing. You know, there's a couple of guys that are rolling out on the on the floor and, and you know just stretching out. It's hilarious to see guys stretch out at 10, but that means it's important to them, which is good. No video games. No Fortnite. I didn't see any Fortnite. Um, I didn't see. I didn't see any of that. I actually, uh, you know, I used to walk some rooms. You know, you know, guys are on the internet reading what you guys are saying. I'm going, what are you guys reading? You know, what Chris Peak is talking about. This is not here. Like, why are you reading? You know, Rivals or whatever they're saying. You know, whatever it is. You you right here. You don't have to read what they're saying. Like, put that stuff away. But I've seen guys in there on their computers at their desk looking to see what's what, what they're saying on the internet. So it was good. I didn't really see many people on the phones. A couple of guys probably talking to their girlfriends.